let me introduce our first speaker. And our speaker is Dr. Andrei Kohut, and he is a specialist in the uh, in history of modern Ukraine. Uh, he is director of the state branch archives of the uh, security service of Ukraine. And he brings to our project uh, his experience and knowledge in the areas of history of Ukraine of the 1930s, 1950s, of course, uh, public history, history of uh, the censorship in the formal uh, USSR and in particular in Ukraine his experience and knowledge in the archival politics and practices in contemporary Ukraine. Uh, but he's also uh, worked in uh, other areas. And for us, it's important that he is a former head of the digital archive of the Ukrainian liberation movement. And he also uh, uh, served as one of the experts on the policy of national remembrance, remembrance working group. So, uh, Andrei, welcome, and we are ready to listen. Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you for coming to my uh, presentation about uh, so-called uh, KGB archives. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm so sorry for my um, English language. Um, unfortunately, we, uh, due to this uh, time of uh, quarantine, it's lack of possibility uh, to uh, improve my English. So I hope you uh, excuse me uh, for some small uh, mistakes. Okay, uh, today I uh, try to briefly talk ab about archives of the security service uh, of Ukraine. Uh, e our phones, uh, peculiarity of uh, works with these uh, archival documents, legislation, some um, <clears throat> points of uh, uh, regulatory acts, uh, what covers these uh, archival uh, documents. Uh, and of course, uh, I try to um, talking a little bit about some uh, specific forms of uh, so-called KGB archives. First of all, uh, when you come across uh, a term of the KGB archives, you must understand that this uh, it's a co collective name means uh, the archives of communist or Soviet secret services since the civil war uh, in Russia to 1991. Uh, for more than 70 years, the communist uh, secret service or secret police uh, have uh, undergone many changes. So the CHK, it's an extraordinary commission uh, was replaced by the GPU, uh, main political directorate, then uh, OGPU, the United States political uh, directorate or administration, and then uh, NKVD, the People's uh, Commissariat of International Affairs. At the same time, uh, NK NKGB, or People's Commissariat of State Security, was also uh, separated. During the Second World War, uh, NKGB uh, was subordinated to NKVD, uh, later, they were again divided and replaced by ministries, Ministry of Internal uh, Affairs, or MVD, in uh, Russian acronym, and the Ministry of State Security, or uh, MGB. Uh, then, after Stalin's death, the MGB was annexed to Ministry of Internal Affairs. Uh, the function of law enforcement and state security were again separate, uh, separated uh, are, and in uh, 1954. Uh, and the KGB or State Security Committee was created. Uh, since the last uh, institution turned out to the KGB, the archives of former Soviet uh, secret services and secret police were called the KGB archives. Uh, <coughs> one moment, I try. Oh, okay. uh, so today uh, in Ukraine, uh, these archives are kept in different institution. On uh, the site, you can see a list of these institutions uh, in different uh, republic of former Soviet Union. They are, uh, these files are uh, also kept in different institution. Uh, be sure to keep uh, this in mind when you uh, uh, try to conduct your archival search, because uh, very often 
some part of some files uh, preserved in one institution, but the next documents or some documents about some events before this uh, may be preserved in uh, another institution. In Ukraine, uh, all these documents today preserve in uh, branch states archives of security service of Ukraine, foreign intelligence service, Ministry of uh, Internal uh, Affairs. But also they are preserved in central state uh, archives of public uh, association of Ukraine. It's a former uh, communist uh, party archives and in uh, all of uh, regional state uh, archives of Ukraine. Uh, the main part of documents uh, kept today in uh, branch state uh, archives of security service of Ukraine. Uh, some part of them also uh, uh, stored in the Central State Archive of Public Association. Uh, <clears throat> the, the reason for the uh, scattering in the uh, unfinished is the unfinished process of transferring uh, archival documents of the communist secret services, which began in Ukraine immediately after uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union and ended in the second half of the uh, 90s. Due to the lack of uh, premises, as well as a general uh, tendency uh, to the extension of the desire of the special services to transfer documents to the civil archives. Now, uh, to find information about person or some events, you need to contact all the listed institutions. Uh, the branch state uh, archive of ministry, for example, uh, Ministry of Internal Affairs of Ukraine, was created on the basis of the uh, archive of Ministry of in Internal Affairs of Ukrainian Soviet, uh, so Socialist Soviet Republic in 1995. The archive has uh, undergone change uh, since Soviet times. In 1954-1956, uh, a large-scale uh, reorganization of Ministry of, of International Affairs was uh, carried out. When the State Security Committee was created, is uh, in this regards the archives of Ministry of Internal Affairs was divided. It uh, retained cases of criminals uh, and uh, KGB, uh, and the KGB to tran uh, transferred first of all the case of those convicted under political articles. Uh, so today we have in our archives, in archives of. Uh, uh, state uh, security service of Ukraine, we have mainly those criminal files uh, uh, about uh, people who was imprisoned by different political reasons. But if you try to find some information uh, from the uh, criminal files sentenced by criminals, uh, cr criminal law, you must uh, go to the archive of Ministry of Internal Affairs. If you remember that a lot of dissidents, for example, were sentenced by criminal uh, uh, cases, not political, uh, and it's some uh, a part of policy of repression. Today we have a situation when one files are in our case, but another files, uh, second or set of files against some uh, dissidents stored, for example, in the Ministry of, of uh, Internal uh, Affairs. <coughs> Uh, at the same time, the victims of Stalinist uh, repression were being rehabilitated. They began to uh, release the deported uh, special settlers, and the case from the place of their deportation were sent to Ministry of Internal, Internal Affairs uh, of the Ukrainian uh, of the Soviet Ukraine. This process lasted only two years, so uh, same of documents uh, for the deported Ukrainians uh, remained uh, outside Ukraine. Today, this institution, uh, I talk about uh, archive of uh, Ministry of Internal, Internal Affairs, stored about uh, more than 3,000 uh, files in more than uh, 1,400 fonts in the central archives and uh, in Kiev and the, in archive of uh, the different uh, regional departments. So they stored. Uh, 3 million point uh, 100 uh, thousand files. There you can uh, search uh, some uh, documents uh, what contains regulatory uh, administrative uh, administrative acts of KGPU uh, and KVD and uh, NKVD and other uh, Soviet institutions documents uh, of ministry uh, from uh, since 1944. 
criminal case against persons uh, convicted during 1990 to 1954. Uh, 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 and uh, of course, uh, they preserve uh, some minutes of the uh, and separate uh, and documents about separate meetings uh, of Troika in 1930s. Uh, they also have uh, cases of uh, disposal peoples and uh, personal files of appointments of the Ministry of Internal Affairs since uh, 1942. The archive uh, contains database of the, uh, of the activities of the punitive and repressive bodies uh, of the U Soviet Union. Uh, they have information uh, on uh, of uh, citizens convicted by uh, separate meetings. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, Troika and uh, other special uh, units of uh, repressive body of Soviet Union. After the collapse of Soviet Union, part of the KGB archives were transferred to the state archives of, of Ukraine. In total, uh, 1.5 million files from the KGB archives was moving to the uh, different Ukrainian state archives, mainly to the regional state uh, archives. Uh, among them, there are 1.3 uh, uh, million uh, filtration files against those who were in German activity and, uh, and more, more than 160,000 criminal files against rehabilitated persons. It uh, important uh, point that in uh, state archives of different Ukrainian region, they preserve only uh, files about people who was rehabilitated. <coughs> people who was not rehabilitated uh, still preserve in uh, our archives or our uh, regional units. <coughs> in uh, 2007, as a branch state archive of the Foreign Intelligence Service uh, of uh, Ukraine was created, uh, to which the documents of the first directorate of the KGB, uh, the one of the charge of foreign intelligence, we are tra transferring to uh, for storage aid. There are very little information about this archive. From the materials that the archives publish, it becomes clear that it contains, among other things, documents related to the activity of Soviet intelligence among the Ukrainian political uh, immigration. For example, they have documents about uh, Petlura, Venichenko, Skoropatsky, and uh, of course, uh, a lot of another information. Uh, but unfortunately, as I say, uh, it may be the archives, what we have uh, very, very little information about the fonts and collection. In uh, 2019, the archives of the Ukrainian Institute of National Memory of Ukraine was created. In the future, all archival documents of special uh, of secret services, uh, law enforcement agency, intelligence service, prosecutors, courts, uh, should be transferred to these archives. Thus, uh, all the KGB archives will be united in one civil institution. The, uh, this uh, should facilitate the work of scientists and researchers in, in order to find these or that documents. You will need to contact only uh, one institution and, uh, and not several as now. Today, the problem is that the premises of the repositories of this archive are in need uh, of repair. And sooner or later, this process, I think, must be uh, completed. Uh, then Ukraine in this matter will become uh, even closer to the other central European countries where such archives already exist, uh, for example, like in Poland or in Czech Republic or other central state, uh, other central European uh, states. <coughs> the archive of uh, security service of Ukraine was created on April, uh, on, uh, April 1st, 1994. However, his story began uh, on September 20, 1991. It was one of the days uh, that the parliament of Ukraine uh, disbanded the KGB. It was decided to transfer all the property of the former KGB to the newly created special uh, services. Then it was the National Sec uh, Security uh, Service of Ukraine. Since March 1992, the organization has been renamed, uh, the institution has been remade to the uh, Security Service of Ukraine. Thus, the archival files of the former 10th uh, uh, Department of the KGB of Soviet Ukraine uh, ended up in the Security Service of Ukraine. I would like to emphasize that uh, today we store exactly the documents of the former archives. 
uh, former KGB guys. This means that we have only those documents that the KGB officers themselves decide to deposit in their archives. Uh, almost all archives of the former communist special services uh, or secret services have a similar situation. The only exception is the Stasi archive uh, uh, from the East Germany. Uh, they are almost half of the ent uh, entire archive is made up of documents that we are in operation, uh, use or operation work at the end of the uh, 1980s in, I mean, uh, mean uh, Stasi archives. Another important point that should uh, be taken into account we are, uh, when working in the uh, security service or SBU archives is that we actually keep the documents of the Republican uh, unit or Republican um, administration uh, of uh, Soviet Ukraine. As a rule, only those documents were sent to Kyiv uh, that were necessary in, in the work on the local uh, special uh, uh, service unit. <coughs> Chronologically, these archives documents of the communist repressive organ in uh, our archives uh, embrace the per period uh, since 1980, <coughs> 18, when the Chika emerged until the last days of the Soviet Union in 1991. These are over uh, 800,000 files, including over one uh, over uh, 200,000 uh, items in Kyiv and over. Uh, 735,000 uh, at regional uh, branches. In our archives, these uh, docu uh, documents are consolidate, consolidate in uh, 48 forms of record groups uh, united by subject and chronologically principles uh, and uh, forms creator, creator uh, principle. According to the documents and files, uh, which uh, uh, and their peculiarities, all fonts may be divided to the four blocks. Uh, first of all, it's a files uh, organized by the personified, uh, some uh, principal printed editions, normative executive documents, and documents of different NKVD KGB units. So, uh, try to uh, explain about uh, all these four blocks. First of all, it's a block uh, of uh, so called person personified uh, fonts. Uh, they, uh, there are fonts in which files are de dedicated to one or several personalities who we are under attention of the communist secret services, who we are repressive and those who uh, committed uh, repression. In general, there are uh, over 160,000 volumes that could be uh, referred to uh, this block. <coughs> Uh, criminal, uh, rehabilitated and unrehabilitated persons files fonts, uh, it's fonts number five and number six, ones of the biggest uh, archival fonts, which include criminal files on a person or a, or a group uh, sentenced in majority for political reasons. The biggest amount uh, of documents related uh, to the period between 1918 uh, and 1991. Among the files, material evidence from time to time happens to uh, appear documents before 1917 and documents after 1991 as a rule related to rehabilitation process uh, issue. For example, there are uh, files against Ukrainian uh, People's Republic's figure, uh, the Russian white movement, people, anti-Bolshevik insurgents, uh, educated uh, classes, uh, so-called intelligentsia, uh, some uh, liberal movement activists, dissidents, and many others. For instance, there are files of Vyacheslav Chernobyl, uh, Vasil Stus, Ivan Zuba, Miroslav Marinovich, and, and many, many uh, others people uh, who may be meet in the uh, book about uh, historical. Uh, the documents of these fonts uh, are also interesting that in uh, addition to investigative documents, uh, they preserve some, uh, uh, in addition to in investigative documents, interrogation records, and pro procedural documents, they also contain uh, evidence material. There can be personal documents, photo, censored literature, postcard pot, posters. Uh, confiscated letters uh, can also be found in uh, these uh, evidence materials. Uh, the next fonts from among this cluster are the investigation and search uh, operation fonts. It's fonts now, uh, number 65 and uh, lettered fonts. Fonts uh, 11. <coughs> this fonts uh, material includes uh, some uh, documents of investigation and search and counterintelligence 
data collection against a person or a group of people who were uh, suspected in uh, committing a crime. Their documents also have uh, chronological limitation uh, from 1918 uh, to late uh, 80s. And they are extreme, uh, it, it, it's uh, the same uh, date. Here we have, for example, Mikhail Grushevsky uh, files, a prominent Ukrainian, not only politicians, but historians. And uh, this, this material uh, also uh, based on aging reports. Also, they include documents acquired through operational, operational ways, uh, some postal censorship tapping and uh, field supervision, and, uh, uh, etc. It should be noted that a huge amount of these fonts uh, documents, especially of uh, 1960s to end of 80s, in KU as well as in regional branches was destroyed in the early uh, 90s. Lettered files against objects of, of special services interest and the counterintelligence uh, tracking uh, comprise uh, a separate array in this month. The next one is the agent personal and working files font. It's, it's font number 60. The materials of these uh, fonts include those uh, of persons who uh, secretly collaborate with the state security the extreme uh, dates of these uh, fonts is 1922 to late uh, 80s. It should be noted that a huge amount of these fonts documents, especially of uh, 60s, 80s in Kyiv, as, as I mentioned, was, uh, was also destroyed in the end of uh, 80s, began of 90s. Thus, the majority of the files in these fonts are personal files uh, of agent of uh, the force directorate of MGB. And KGB, uh, Soviet Ukraine, who operated as uh, commanders uh, during Second World War II, uh, during Second World War. Uh, and the uh, last fonts of this cluster, the former State Security Employment Personal uh, Files Fonds, it's fonts number 12. It consists of the, uh, of, uh, of the personal files of the former security engines, agencies from uh, Cheka to KGB, worker uh, servicemen and civilian uh, employment employment uh, since 1918. It's maybe one of the better uh, preserved fonts because it's a question of uh, salaries and, uh, uh, and pension. <coughs> next, uh, next block, and uh, it's a one uh, font, fonts number 17. Um, it's a collection of, print, of printed edition. It was uh, created in December, 1959. Um, Printed edition manuscripts, lectures on special service work texts, uh, reference books, state security, veterans' memoirs, ex exemplary files, and documents anthology formed uh, this collection. For instance, for, for instance, of this site, you can see the covers of the KGB textbook on fighting uh, against Ukrainian nationals movement about Japan uh, uh, for the intelligence, and also of uh, uh, a book about uh, United States uh, uh, foreign uh, intelligence service. <coughs> uh, the next one, uh, a, a very interesting and significant font, it is font number nine. Uh, that is normative executive documents. The font consists of orders, direction, instruction, and and Republican and Union uh, organ boards and meetings materials, which are comprised of nearly uh, one, 1,000 items. Executive documents of state security bo bodies uh, from 1919 to the first half of 1930s in Ukraine were almost lost. The majority of the normative, legal, and ex executive documents of the uh, Soviet Ukraine and Soviet Union uh, are available mainly from the uh, nine meet of nine of seconds. And uh, what you also uh, must remember that we have uh, two different parts of these fonts. One of them is uh, order and instruction from uh, Soviet Union level. And another one is uh, difference uh, instruction uh, orders and so on uh, from the uh, Soviet Ukrainian level. So it, its font will be uh, interested not only those who research uh, some topics uh, according to Ukrainian history, but uh, according to the all uh, Soviet Union um, issue. <coughs> uh, 
uh, the uh, four, uh, the first type of fonts in uh, our archives in security service archives in, is uh, composed of um, is uh, composed of uh, NKVD KGB units documents. Here, first of all, uh, the uh, GPU KGB Secretariat fonts, uh, fonts number 16, it uh, worth attention. The, the Secretariat uh, of Secret Services can be uh, traced fra uh, fragmentically since 1930s. Uh, detailed structure and function of the Secretariat we established on August uh, 26, 1952. Uh, there are uh, records of proceedings uh, at the KGB uh, proceedings at the KGB leaders leadership operating uh, matters instruction and uh, and orientation for KGB officers reports special reports reference summaries of operation of the struggle with uh, counter revolutionary organization Ukrainian nationalistic organization foreign uh, intelligence intelligence activity against uh, against the Soviet Union statistical reports of the course of operation against anti-Soviet uh, elements and many others in uh, this one. Uh, <coughs> uh, on the site, you can see, for example, some documents regarding uh, to postal censorship from uh, different years. Uh, the next uh, ones of these types are organized by center units which existed we, within NKVD KGB at different times. Uh, first of all, it will be uh, fonts of second directorate uh, fonts. It's fonts number one. Uh, it's a font of a counter intelligence unit. During, during World, World War II, the second directorate conducted operative activities against subverts and uh, intelligence actions of the Nazi Germany, its allies, and other countries. Special service uh, and provide counter intelligence work in the economy um, at the executive important defense facility. There's a, uh, they, uh, some, uh, after war, the second directorate remained a unit of uh, counter in intelligence uh, defense. The next uh, font, what will be useful for you, it's font number two. This is a font of the Department for Combating Banditry of Ministry of uh, Internal Affairs uh, or uh, Department uh, uh, 2N and the fourth department of the MGB KGB. It's a lot of uh, names of different uh, units, uh, Soviet, Soviet Secret Services, but uh, it's mainly focused uh, uh, all in, the, uh, in the documents of Office for so called combating, uh, combating uh, banditry or counter banditry uh, and its main uh, documents. Uh, we are taken with the co combating or counter the resistance uh, movement uh, or some uh, counter intelligence, uh, uh, intelligence, the UN and TUPA, as well as foreign center of Ukrainian nationalists. And in this font, you, you can find a lot of documents uh, regarding to the difference uh, counter action against the Ukrainian diaspora organization. Uh, because the structure of the Soviet Secret Service changed uh, depending on the uh, needs of the Communist Party, the units that uh, deal with postal censorship were also under different subordination. For a long time, postal censorship was uh, handled by the uh, de uh, Department V. Uh, it's a, or a del V uh, in Russian languages. Uh, today, the, uh, these documents are also stored in two different fonts, font number three and uh, fonts number uh, 15. Uh, font number uh, three, it's font of the uh, fifth uh, department and of MGB KGB. The, the office, uh, this office was established in July 1946 and was responsible for previous operation for processing of person suspected of uh, hostile activities, uh, some uh, prompt measure to stop attempts by enemy intelligence uh, agency to uh, infiltrate uh, secret units uh, of uh, government agency some industrial en enterprises and, and uh, scientific institutions. Uh, <clears throat> and also they uh, work on the search for authors and distributors of anti-Soviet uh, anonymous documents. Uh, after 1950s, the uh, these departments will also uh, task it with combating, uh, combating the anti-Soviet elements. 
among uh, clergy and uh, sectarians. Uh, on July 23, 1959, the second and the fifth uh, departments of the KGB of uh, Soviet Union were merged into one counter intelligence unit, uh, the second office. It's a last date, uh, dates of this one. Hans uh, number 15 is uh, uh, MGB, KG, MGB, KGB operational and technical management uh, funds. It was in the phone that uh, documents on postal uh, censorship were kept. The first case came to the phones in 1952. Uh, unfortunately, the font has only 20 files, 20 volumes. The fact is that the materials of postal censorship had a uh, limited uh, shelf lives, only five or 10 years, uh, and after this time, they were destroyed. So now you can find more documents on postal censorship in the Secretariat font, it's font number 16, what I mentioned uh, earlier, and other fonts. Uh, for example, the fonts of uh, regional uh, regional uh, department from Ternopil, Lviv, or Drohobych, who was uh, very good present <coughs> to our time. Uh, so, uh, one uh, uh, want to believe that special, uh, that secret services documents contain only uh, undeniable facts because the secret uh, services should have uh, accumulated only re reliable uh, data. But in the documents of communist secret uh, services, it is uh, definitely not the case. There are truths, how truths, and uh, transparent lines in the KGB documents. You have to remember this always when uh, you work with them. Especially, this is typical for documents uh, related to those who communist special secret uh, special uh, service fought. Lecture, uh, letters and memoirs of Bolsheviks uh, adversary uh, we are falsified, and to examination records uh, the necessary for the world uh, world uh, revolution stuff uh, was added. So, uh, critical examination of the sources is uh, of extra uh, extraordinary value uh, here. Unfortunately, not all documents, uh, as I mentioned, of repression agency rename, uh, remain uh, until now. There were several forges of the communist secret uh, police archives. The first known to us happened according to the KGB uh, chamber uh, order number 00, uh, 511 in 1954. Uh, during 1954-1955, uh, uh, the Communist Special Services had to review all operation archives and uh, finally free themselves from compromised material of uh, Connes Soviet citizens, collected by uh, fraud and illegal investigation uh, remedies application, it, uh, end of citation. Uh, but in fact, uh, this was a proof of documents related uh, to the Stalinist repression. The last uh, known archived forger was committed in the late Soviet era in the uh, beginning of 90s, according to the KGB order number 00150, and was initiated by Central and Eastern European Revolution, which allowed huge arrays to the communist secret services documents to be captured uh, by new democratic uh, authorities. Obviously, there were uh, other or less scale forger, except there are two big uh, ones. It is uh, hard to find out nowadays how many of what was destroyed. There is a regulatory uh, that the father before 1991, the uh, more documents remain. Uh, now I uh, want to stop briefly on the uh, peculiarity of the legislation on KGB archives. The realm uh, of access to the KGB uh, archives crucially changed on April uh, 4, 9th, uh, to 2015. The day uh, the Parliament of Ukraine adopted the law on access to archives of repressive organs of communist totalitarian regime of 1917 to 1991, together with the three other so called decommunization law. The practice uh, to pass a special law regulating matters to, of access to the documents of former secret services of uh, repressive agencies <coughs> of total. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, of totalitarian and uh, authoritarian regimes, it's uh, not new. Such acts uh, of legislation work in uh, virtually all countries of, of the former uh, Warsaw Pact uh, and some of the former uh, Soviet 
Union Republic, you can see uh, on slide map with country who have special regulation uh, regarding to the former communist uh, secret services uh, archives. And uh, in different countries, uh, this regulation have uh, different uh, principle, but they have some very uh, uh, unite idea that all these uh, uh, archivals uh, must archives must be open for researcher and for uh, for society. Uh, so uh, today uh, the law contains the following uh, provision. Firstly, a separate category of documents, namely, namely the archive documents of repressive organ of Soviet Union is uh, defined. The title repressive organs mean all uh, coercive uh, agencies and special service that operated in Soviet Union and applied means and methods of state uh, coercion and terror because uh, of class, national or religions motives and which activity were characterized by numerous human rights violation. Uh, in general, the primary in the uh, West, uh, all these archives uh, called KGB archives. Secondly, all archives of repress of uh, KGB archives are open for everyone, for uh, uh, and are open uh, for everyone, and uh, everyone, both a citizen of Ukraine and a foreigner, may get access to the documents. The provision depends uh, neither on the facts of rehabilitation of a repressed person, nor on the date uh, of creation of the documents, of uh, or relative permission. But there is uh, one exception. Uh, the law uh, for, uh, foresees a uh, right to uh, re regime victims to restrict their personal data. The uh, Im uh, immedi uh, immediately uh, immediate uh, victims of the regime may restrict access to whatever information about themselves for 25 years. There are uh, now we have only uh, one appeal on close, uh, close uh, their personal uh, data yet. So in our archives uh, closed uh, only one files regarding to, uh, to this uh, norm. <coughs> Victims, uh, relatives may restrict access only to uh, sen sensitive information about religion, political uh, outlooks, private or, and sexual lives. During the law uh, forcing period, there were two uh, addresses of such time. Interesting that in, in the course of the processing, it became clear that such data is uh, absent in uh, our uh, archival criminal file. Those uh, involved in repressive activities of the communist uh, totalitarian regime uh, are deprived uh, of these rights. Uh, the law foresees that information about repressive bodies and their and employments or agents uh, cannot be secret at all. Uh, also here, uh, there were two uh, appeals by the former NKVD workers uh, in Rivne City. One of them even bought an action against the SBU, uh, sec Ukrainian Security Service, uh, demanding not to publish uh, his documents. But later, he uh, withdrew the, his statement of a crime. That, uh, that was, uh, at, this, at, at that moment, 93 years old Boris Tekler, known uh, for being the mother uh, of a Ukrainian underground graphics, Neil Hasevich. Now, uh, maybe a few years ago, Boris Tekler was, was died. Uh, an important addition uh, to this item is that the effects of the law of uh, on protection of the personal data does not reach documents of uh, repressive organs. Sadly, all documents of the repressive agencies have uh, to be transferred to joint archives, which uh, should what was created under uh, the Ukrainian Institute of National Remembrance. Uh, <coughs> Transfer of documents uh, from agency, uh, agency without archival fun function, for example, like Security Service of Ukraine or Ministry of Interior uh, Affairs or uh, Foreign uh, Intelligence uh, Service, would, all, would allow uh, them to overcome the Soviet legacy, which uh, is a, a significant element uh, of uh, the uh, decommunization and reforms. This would also make access to documents much easier because today they remain in the special services archives. Access to them is uh, complicated by, by bureaucratic procedure, especially for journalists and foreigners. And if uh, somebody of you coming to us, uh, you know that it's a much more longer pro procedure than for, uh, for citizens of Ukraine. 
costly, the law uh, defines that only Ukrainian security, uh, security classification stamp uh, are valid. Uh, uh, accordingly, the Soviet uh, designation uh, secretna or secret and top secret or solution secretna are just the graphic marks and cannot be considered as a data security classification. Uh, fifth, making copies by own technical uh, means has to be free for the archival visitor. Only in case uh, archives make copy themselves, the applicants can be uh, compensated uh, uh, these uh, expenses. Uh, six, uh, the person who published information but not uh, the archivist uh, who offered the file is responsible for a distribution and uh, credibility. Seven, the obligation to digitalize archival documents for them to be safe and more accessible in, uh, is established. Speaking uh, of the law implementation, there is, no, is now neither cases of uh, document success restriction, not any other incident of demanding pay for copying these documents by users themselves. Uh, <clears throat> law, uh, law implementation go, going to be creation uh, uh, law implementation is going to be creation uh, of the Ukrainian Institute uh, Archive of Ukrainian Institute of National Remembrance. One of the crucial challenges are resource for equipping uh, uh, of the uh, repository room. Therefore, uh, while the archives is not able to store archival files, security service archives uh, continue to provide access to these documents. Now we have a constant trend of increasing numbers of people who address uh, to archives which contain documents or uh, of uh, repressive body. On, on, on the site, you can see how uh, the number of appeals and visitors to archives uh, uh, has grown. So the coronavirus pandemic uh, has changed the, the situation and now we currently only accept uh, six people, uh, three people before uh, <coughs> uh, before lunch and three people uh, uh, after lunch. Around a half of all uh, addresses concern this, uh, the issue related to searching information about repressed relatives and more than one third uh, are addressed by scholars and researchers. The rest are general addresses of social and legal nature, for example, extracts uh, for pension uh, estimation or looking for documents for uh, illustration procedure needs. Due to the fact that uh, some of the appeals to the archives uh, uh, appeal on some anniversary of uh, various uh, historical events, we uh, create digital collections that can be worked with, the, uh, with those collections in our reading room. Uh, for example, the collection of digital uh, copies about uh, Chernobyl uh, uh, disaster, Baban Yar, uh, uh, the Hungarian Revolution, Ukrainian Helsinki uh, groups, uh, and, and so on, so on. Uh, <coughs> on the uh, <coughs> and you uh, can see, for example, some um, and you can see, for example, some uh, document. Ah, sorry. It's a, some mess with my presentation. <laughs> uh, of the uh, on slide, you can see, uh, for example, okay, on, on slide you can see two uh, two uh, reports, two page from different reports from Font sixteen. On the left uh, is the first message about you can see uh, documents about. Uh, announcement about accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. There you can see how the first secretary of the Central Committee of Communist Party, Aldemir Cherbetsky, wrote a question about the level of radiation. He uh, asked, what does it mean? What does uh, the level of uh, radiation mean? Sorry. And uh, the second, uh, second uh, first page of uh, 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 some note, uh, sp uh, special note, it's about establishment of the Ukrainian Helsinki uh, human rights union groups. It states that the uh, groups were also established by Ukrainian dissidents, in, in particular uh, those in respect on which the block uh, files was conducted. Blocked its name, uh, it's the code name of this of file. And unfortunately, these files uh, of tracking down Ukrainian dissidents was dropped. 
However, many reports of the restored, uh, destroyed files have uh, survived in other uh, fonts and in, 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 other, in other collections. <clears throat> Based on uh, our documents, we also published online collection. Our partners uh, here, the Center for Research and Deliberation Movement and uh, the Digital Archives uh, project on the site. Uh, on the site, you can see some examples uh, of titles of such collections. Uh, we try, uh, it's also about Chernobyl, uh, the Port of Crimea, uh, how KGB fighting against the memory about Babin Yar, uh, its repression uh, at the time of Holodomor, and so on and so on. We try to uh, repair, uh, to represent as broadly as positive the thematic, uh, the, the topics of different uh, backgrounds, of different events, background of the history of Ukraine in uh, the 20th centuries. For example, the deportation of Crimean Tatar. You can see these documents on the uh, left part of the slide. Uh, and the right uh, part of slide, you can see a uh, memorial reads uh, to the victims of Babin Yar. The KGB uh, persecuted all attempts by the Jewish community uh, in Kyiv to, uh, to commemorate memory of uh, Holocaust victims. Uh, also, many books uh, have al al already been uh, published uh, on the basis of archival of our uh, archival documents. There are a collection of documents, for the example, about uh, Great Terror, about uh, uh, NKVD officers uh, from Great Terror. It's about uh, also about Ukrainian uh, underground movement. Uh, Ukrainian uh, organization, Ukrainian nationalist, uh, about Chernobyl, and so on, so on. <coughs> and uh, and also, it's some best, uh, bestsellers or monographs, for example, uh, books of Lin Viola, uh, Stalinist perpetrators on trial, or for example, book of Serhii Plokhi, The Man with the Poison Gun. I, I hope you know uh, both uh, books. I, and also, I, I hope that among our our listeners of uh, this seminar, there will be uh, also those who will add the list of books written on the basis uh, of our interest. Uh, and, and and maybe uh, a few words on what it's better to do uh, uh, to do before uh, your uh, before your visit uh, to archives. Uh, before uh, visiting. Uh, and archives, it is a uh, first words collection, collecting the most possible information about the search subject uh, from public uh, available uh, resources. This will, be, uh, this will help you determine uh, what is, uh, specifically you would like to find in the archives and uh, we are exactly search for it. it you must organize so-called preparatory uh, stage of your work. You must ask your supervisor, colleagues, and friends. Uh, try to search in uh, academic papers, books, uh, journals, and of course, try to search some information in uh, digital archives and uh, online database. What exists uh, at this moment, uh, and once uh, <clears throat> the basis information has been collected, date and uh, dates, place of birth of your hero of your uh, 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 of your paper of your research project, uh, some circumstances of one or another events uh, are established, one can uh, produce to the next stage, access to the archives. One can write a letter to the archives requesting an access to archival materials of uh, certain persons, events, uh, etc. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, and you uh, must remember that some, uh, that if you find uh, more uh, relevant inf information regarding your uh, key uh, issue of your ar archival search, it will be helpful for uh, archival uh, for archivists to find what uh, what you need. And of course, you you can try uh, work with uh, academical articles, papers, and so on try to find some mentioned different uh, archival files. <coughs> uh, and of course, when before you start uh, write uh, or coming to archive, uh, try to find some website of these archives and uh, try to find in information, uh, not uh, about some uh, directories, guidelines of these archives, description of fonts and collections, some rules uh, of 
how work reading rooms, cost of paid services and condition of the provision, working days, of course, uh, when archives is uh, open. And uh, request to the archives uh, uh, are recommended to be written before you visit. Uh, plan your visit uh, only after you have received a response uh, to your letter uh, from archives. Sample requests are usually posted on websites of the archives. Uh, I, mean, uh, I will want to mention uh, maybe two books, uh, what will be useful, uh, what will be useful for you. One of them, it's, uh, uh, it's a book uh, called uh, the KGB archives for media. Uh, please don't disturb from the, this title. It's a book focused uh, especially for media, but it uh, will be uh, very useful for you because they uh, describe how organized archival fonts, what information preserved in different types of different files and uh, how you can um, find or believe to information what you read uh, in this archival fonts. This also, uh, this book uh, freely uh, available in English uh, on the internet in the site of the Center of Research of Liberation Movement or in, in other places. And uh, another, the next book, uh, it's, uh, it's a guide to our archives. Uh, he, this book exists in Russian and Ukrainian languages. So, and it also freely uh, exists in the internet. Uh, so, uh, summarizing my, uh, my speech, I want to note that uh, uh, today uh, we have a free access to the KGB uh, archives. And it has not only to provide a chance to reveal names of victims of uh, communist regime uh, in the uh, full, but it will also be a uh, preventer for repeating totalitarian practices in the future. This is, uh, in fact, a significant and long term investment, uh, I hope, in Ukrainian democratic future. So, when when we are uh, talking about KGB archives, about free access to KGB archives, it's not only um, important uh, topic to the uh, researchers, to the historians. But, uh, but, 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 but also to Ukrainian society. Ukrainian law on access uh, to archives of the communist uh, secret services uh, as to compare with uh, legislature of other Central European country provides uh, the widest variety of opportunities for scientific research as well as a search for relatives who were victims of totalitarian regimes. In fact, it is today, it, it's more liberal, liberal among the uh, the co-European legislature. Zera is a current, currently the biggest and unique uh, by its content open archive, uh, archival complex of from Chica to KGB documents uh, uh, preserved in, in the world. Of course, we have um, much more documents in Moscow, but they still uh, close. So opportunities to work with uh, previous uh, inaccessible documents allow to verify existing historical concepts as well as to make uh, new uh, discoveries. And uh, I mentioned Sergei Pluhich, uh, who maybe a few weeks ago uh, um, present uh, the last book about Operation Frankie. It's very interesting if you, if you see, it's very interesting book about uh, United States uh, uh, base uh, in the near Poltava uh, during uh, the end of Second World War. So thank you uh, for your attention. Sorry for my English. And uh, if you have some questions, you're welcome. Thanks.